welcome back to our new class um, this class is going to be dealing with pedigree and uh, this pedigree is going to be divided into two that is sex linked characters and non sex linked characters previously we saw how we can deal with sex linked and non sex linked characters without involving them in a pedigree this class is being brought to you by thunder movies uh, we focus on quality you can find us on that uh, information as shown here and also by Royal College which is found in 12 Goldman Street Florida you can send them a message whatsapp message from grade R to grade 12 don't forget to subscribe for free for new classes and then you can leave your comment there or you can find us on this number uh, you can send any question concerning about uh, life science uh, physical science uh, we can help you in that uh, regard uh, sex linked characters are characters whose genes are carried on sex chromosome you have a sex chromosome this sex chromosome uh, it might have uh, an X so you remember we have two kinds of chromosomes we have X chromosome and then we have the Y chromosome so if you look at X chromosome X chromosome um, you find out that the gene which is carried on X chromosome but Y chromosome doesn't carry anything so these alleles or these genes which are carried on X chromosome we call them sex linked characters so in our crossing we are going to be dealing with the genes which are carried on X chromosome so some of the examples of sex uh, linked genes we have hemophilia and then we have color examples of uh, non sex linked uh, genes or characters we have uh, a character which is albinism is being caused by a recessive allele uh, which is not carried on x chromosome that's why we say it is non sex linked here you see that the individual loses the skin color uh, those people are the same as us but the only difference between us and them is just that they ha don't have that gene which causes the darkness of the skin color it means that the more you are dark the more amount of melanin you have in your body so let's look at an example the pedigree below shows uh, the inheritance of albinism in a family and the genotype of gems is shown in the diagram you need to identify which is uh, a male which is a female in most cases we give you the key but sometimes you don't give you a key you need to know that when i talk about a box it means uh, a male and when i talk about a circle it means uh, a female but if the box or circle is shaded it means that that individual is being affected by that disease which is being talked about in the question after identifying that you need to know uh, the genotype, the phenotypes, and the genotypes of this individual. But you cannot know the phenotype unless you know the genotype of that organism. In most cases, we de derive this from the lower, the lower generation to the upper generation. So, in this case, you have homozygous. Remember, this is a non-sex linked, whereby you don't need to use X and Y. So, if you have two parents and they produce no individual who is sick or affected, then it means that these parents must might be normal or they might be, uh, one must be homozygous dominant and then another might be the heterozygous. So, in this case, we don't know whether this one is homozygous or heterozygous. So now we have to go to the children they have produced. If you look at these children, you'll find out that in their children, there is one who is sick, is albinism. So if it's albinism, it means that this John produced a recessive allele. And then this Johanna also produced a recessive allele so that the small a and the small a here, they combine to produce two small a's which are forming this individual to be sick then it means that this and this they are heterozygous heterozygous it means that they have capital a and small a and then capital a small a then automatically if there is a recessive allele here then automatically table was also uh, heterozygous 
So you see now, even these ones, this one is grass is sick, it's having an albinism condition. And then this one is normal, but we don't know whether it's heterozygous or homozygous. But because they produce kids who are not sick, then automatically this one, it means that it was homozygous. If they were heterozygous, they would have produced at least one kid who is, um, who is sick. So if we go to our question, they're asking you a question, how many grandsons do John and Teboho have? If you look at this, this is the first generation, second generation, third generation. This. So if you talk about the grandson, they're talking about this. So basically, when they ask you how many are, uh, how many grandsons do Teboho and Teboho and Teboho and James have? Then it means that we have to count this, that this is the grand, these are the grandsons, but this, these are grandchildren, but this is the son and this is the son. So how many are they? It means that they are two. So the answer here must be two. And then they are saying, what is the genotype of grace? Grace is already affected, it's an albino female. And they are saying the genotype, uh, this, uh, the genotype of John. Well, John, John is here, but we say that they produced one individual who is sick. So if one individual is an albino, then automatically these two must be heterozygous. So John is having uh, capital A and then a small a. They are saying John and Johanna wish to have children. John and Johanna, they wish to have uh, another child. What is the percentage chance that the child will uh -huh, be a girl. Uh, in sex crossings, uh, percentage to produce a girl is or a boy is always 50. You have 50% 50 of producing a boy, 50% of producing a girl. doesn't matter that you, here you have two boys and then you have one girl, then what is the percentage is going to be 25? No. You have equal chances of producing a boy or producing a girl. So the answer is 50%. And then what is the percentage chance of producing a kid who is an albino? Yeah, they're not specific whether it's a boy or a girl. They are trying to ask you just the, the kid who is an albino. If you look at uh, this, you find out that you have P2, because it's the second generation, cross with P2. And then phenotype, you have the normal who is Johanna crossed with the normal who is what? Who is John. So now the genotype, since we know that these are normal, the two of them are what? The two of them are normal. We see it here. John and Johanna. But they produce a kid who is who is what? Who is sick. Then it means that these are heterozygous. Therefore we have John, Johanna who is capital A small a and then John who is capital A small a. Both of them are heterozygous. Then meiosis must take place. Once meiosis takes place, you produce what you call the gametes. Then fertilization, this process for fertilization. After that, when fertilization occurs, you can use a pinnate square or you can just cross. In this case, this and this are going to come together. You produce A, capital A, capital A. And then here you're going to produce capital A and then a small a. Then here you're going to produce this and this going to be capital A and then a small a. And then this one is going to be small a, small a. So in this case, if you look at the, these are the offsprings in second third generation. But now what are the phenotypes of this? You have one, two, three. You have three of them. They are normal. They are normal. Yes. And then you have one, one who is an albino. Yes. So three normal and then one an albino. So the question was asking, what is the percentage chance of producing a kid who is an albino? In that case, I have one individual who is an albino. Out of how many? If you look at it here, I have one individual who is an albino and I have three of them who are normal. So in this case, I'm going to have one divided by, I'm going to have one, I divide it by four and then multiply it by a hundred so that I produce uh, an answer which is 25%. So it means that I have 25% of producing a kid who is 
an albino. So basically that is one of the first question. This question was dealing with um, things uh, cross which involves a non-sex linked trait. Sex linked characters. We saw that these are characters which is, whose genes are carried on X chromosome. So if they are carried on X chromosome, uh, then you are involving it in a pedigree. The pedigree diagram below shows how sex-linked disorder hemophilia, an example, is inherited in the family. Study the diagram below and use the symbols capital H. So they have given you what to use, capital H, for a normal individual, and then a recessive allele, you must use a small h. So here you have a small diagram. You have one, uh, individual 1 and 2 until individual 11. So in this case, find out the key. Uh, one person is uh, hidden here. Uh, so can you identify who is that person? So if you see this, this is a normal male, normal uh, hemophilic male, don't say affected male, because if they give you the question and it's related to a certain disease or disorder, you must specify the disorder. And then you have the normal female how how about the normal or affected female how is it gonna be it's gonna be with circle and it is shaded so uh still they do the same thing but in this case it's a little bit different why because on the female we have x and x whereby they can be some alleles on them and then on males you only have one x y doesn't carry any allele so if you have these two and then you produce at least one kid who is sick this the lady is already having two x then the guy who is having one x if it's normal is normal if he's sick is sick or affected is affected so in this it, it is we only need to know what is the the genotype of this so the moment you produce one kid who is sick then automatically qualifies this person to be heterozygous so it means that two is heterozygous and then these two they produce kids who are normal then automatically this female must be homozygous dominant and then these two also married no 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 these two married each other and then they produced two boys one sick one uh, one one boy is normal then automatically it means that this lady was heterozygous so that a recessive allele from from this individual can come and then join with a Y chromosome from this individual and then they produce a kid who is sick. Give the possible genotype of the individual of number one. So if you look at the f number one is physical, they want the possible genotype of number one. Number one is here and then they are saying that they want the genotype. So we have seen that number one and number two they they cross to produce a kid who is sick, then automatically this father is normal. So it's gonna be X, capital H, and then a Y. So that a recessive allele from here can combine with this, and then they produce a male who is sick. Then they are saying that, uh, give the possible genotype of individual two. If you look at individual two, this is, we say that this is a female, this female must have a recessive allele so that they can produce this. Therefore, it's going to be X, capital H, and then X, small h. So that this small h can combine with the Y from this individual who is a male to produce the person who is sick. And then another one, they're saying, give the phenotype of individual number two, the phenotype. Now they want the phenotype. What do you see on individual number two? I see a normal, is normal, yes, it's not shaded, and then is a female, a normal female. And then they are saying the phenotype of individual four. If you look at female, this one box means a male, but the box is shared. Therefore, it is a hemophilic male. Then they are saying the person label number eleven. Hmm, label number eleven marries uh, a carrier. Carrier is a, a person who is have, who is heterozygous. is carrying the recessive allele, but is not shown outside then give percentage give the percentage chance of their sons being hemophilic uh, you have x you have a guy who is already sick and then y and then you have x who is a carrier capital h yes 
two of them, but this person is a carrier. Yes, if he's a carrier, then it means that it's going to be like that. So it means that what's the percentage chance of producing a kid who is an albino? This is going to combine with this to produce uh, two recessive alleles. This one is going to combine with this. It's going to be normal. This is going to combine with this. It's going to be normal. This is going to combine with this to form to, to form a recessive allele with a boy. So I'm going to have one boy sick, one boy uh, normal, one girl sick, one girl who is normal. So if you come here, you come here to our question, they're saying that what is, what is the, uh, give the percentage chance of producing sons, in this case they're producing sons being and being hemophilic, producing sons being hemophilic. Remember we have four kids, they didn't say that among sons and they, they just say being hemophilic. So I have one son who is sick divided by the four times times 100 then it gives me 25 and then, then they're saying give one example of sex linked disorder other than hemophilia in this case you can give uh, color blindness is also another example and then lastly we will be coming back for another class which is going to be dealing with genetics genetic engineering and then after genetic engineering we will go to nervous system thank you very much for watching don't forget to subscribe for new videos which are coming